but yes, you're, there, there have been women storytellers. They often were, uh, however, considered to be shkeleha, that is, in Irish, storyteller, just people who tell stories, as opposed to shanachia, who were people who would speak about old things, who have that authority of, of bringing the ancestors back to, to our time. And um, so during the season, the, um, you're trying to reconnect with the ancestors, and one of the ways of doing that is to tell about events that happened long ago. So you go back to the creation of the world, you go back to the ancient heroic age, uh, the time when uh, you know, there were heroes who were larger than life and who did certain striking and important things that you couldn't do today. And you reconnect with that time, with that way of thinking and that way of being. This is a way of gaining new energy for the present. You go back to the source, you go back to the way things were when when they were less corrupt and less decayed than they are now. This is a very common theme in Finicht, uh, which is, you know, that people used to be giants, people used to have incredible strength. Uh, when Ushin, who is the last surviving Fenian, uh, is uh, tricked into, well, actually he's not tricked, he, he uh, returns from fairyland, from the land of the young, uh, after having been there for many hundreds of years, and he's tricks himself into staying, <laughs> into being stuck in the mortal world. And he's horrified by the fact that all the people in Ireland seem to have become tiny and puny and weak. And he's the only one who, who has the strength of ancient days. Even though he, um, actually this is how he's caught, is because uh, he sees that the weak, puny people of future Ireland have found the horn of Finn McCool, one of the versions of the story. <coughs> and it's such a huge horn that they can't pick it up. And so he, of course, he's there on his magic horse, and he says, these silly little people can't pick up such a small object, and so he puts out his arm to pick it up, and in order to bend down low enough, he has to put one of his feet on the ground, and as soon as he touches the land of Ireland, he's caught back in time. He's back, he's now in, in real time, and then he loses all his strength, of course, because he's hundreds of years old. <laughs> so all of the time that he's spent suspended not aging in fairyland, and now comes back onto him. But there's this notion again that you know the Fianna in the days of the Fianna, people were heroic, people were strong, people were great, and after that it was all downhill. So you're trying to go back to that time when people were great and heroic and strong, and making the present generation feel that as though they were actually reliving that time. Um, not surprisingly, in Ireland and in Scotland, the main ingredient of the storytelling season is Fíniacht. Fíniacht is the Lord of the Fianna. It's the stories about Finn McCool and the warrior bands uh, of his time. These were uh, people who were supposed to live in a kind of counterculture. They left their families, they left their land, they forsook any kind of inheritance that they might have in their birth communities and they lived among each other in basically voluntary communities where as hunters and gatherers in the woods and as mercenary the warriors so that they were in a sense independent of society and um, so there's a whole series of stories of course about Finn McCool who was the leader of one of these bands and eventually also the uh, the Fenian who had a contract as a mercenary with the King of Ireland. So he became the Rí'éinia, the royal Fenian, and as such the preeminent Fenian over all of the Fianna of Ireland. And he had companions who were given particular characters, they're very easily recognizable personalities, rather like Robin Hood and his men, right, where each of the men has a very particular, instantly recognizable profile. So Finn McCool has uh, Kuilte, uh, who is sort of the, the diplomat and the nice guy among his followers. And he has Conan, who's the grumbler, the sort of nasty fat guy who's a, a coward but always acts with, acts with a great deal of bluster and aggressiveness. And uh, he has uh, well, Ushin, who's his son, who was born of a supernatural mother, who was enchanted into the form of a deer, so that he's not quite of this world. And so he has... Uh, prophetic uh, abilities, and he um, 
It's the mystic, more or less, of the Fenians. And then his own son, Oscar, is the one who's always about fair play. Whenever there's a conflict among the Fenians, Oscar comes in and he says, no, you'll do this and you'll do that, you know. And no, I can't countenance that you should do this, you know, but you have the advantage over this other person, so forth. So you, all of these are very vividly drawn personalities. They're the, and the, the thrill of Fenicht is how they interact with each other. It's how, uh, how these very, very different people can manage to cooperate and work towards a common goal. It's often the excitement of the stories in that. But uh, the primary importance of Fenicht is that the Fiena, uh, now in, when people talk about Fenian lore, and uh, uh, they often accentuate the warrior aspect of the Fiena. I think Fiena are primarily warriors, and you have a lot of sort of modern, um, sort of romantic approaches to being a warrior. And people often look to Fenicht as warrior culture and how. Um, Uh, you know, to study the, the way the Fianna behaved in battle is the Celtic warrior ethos that you're going to try and regain in the modern world. You see a lot of that in sort of Celtic Reconstructionist movements that have a kind of warrior uh, militia aspect to them. And this is actually not true at all of the ancient Celtic world because the Fianna are uh, atypical warriors. They're countercultural warriors. They don't at all behave the way uh, established cultural warriors, you know, acting in the, in the name of their own tribe, representing their own established community, would have acted at all. Um, and to the audience of the Fenian tale, that's not the primary characteristic of the Fenians. The Fenians are warriors, yes, and they get into all kinds of fights and they have adventures that are adventures that involve a lot of fighting and sword play and things like that. But that's not their main function. Their main function really is survival. And the big thing about the Fianna is that they live out in the wilderness. And that's where they have their adventures. They have their adventures among uh, creatures that are not quite human, that are on the boundary between the human and the wild. Uh, they meet a lot of um, fairy races that are half animal. Uh, a lot of the adventures they have are with the, the dog heads and the cat heads and the pig heads. <laughs> <laughs> all these different half-animal fairies. And the whole notion is that uh, where the Fenians are, there's no real dividing line between the human and the animal, between the tame and the wild, between culture and nature. And that's what's great about the Fianas, they can pass through that barrier whenever they want to. They're human, they know what it is to be human, they know what needs humans have, they have to They'd have the same needs for shelter and food and companionship that settled humans have. But at the same time, they know what it is to be wild. They can understand animals. They can hunt animals because they know exactly what it feels like to be an animal. And they can put themselves into the mind space of the animal. And sometimes in the stories, they can turn into animals themselves. They can turn into the animals that they hunt. Again, Oshin is the son of a deer. Uh, the deer is the main prey animal. That's the main animal that you hunt. And so Ushin is uh, not quite a human and not quite a deer. Right? He's sort of in, in that in-between state of being both the hunter and the prey. Um, so what you get from these stories is the energy of drawing what makes you live, what nurtures you from the land, from physical nature where all of your nourishment comes from, and bringing it into the realm of culture, bringing it into the human community. Only the Fianna can do that because they're right on the border.